The vast majority of Yu-Gi-Oh cards make their initial debut in the anime prior to their release in the physical card game. But sometimes those cards, regardless of their popularity, never cross the bridge between the Yu-Gi-Oh anime universe and the real world. It's almost as though they're being kept secret. Are these cards just too powerful to integrate into the physical card game? Today, we're uncovering the secrets of Yu-Gi-Oh. The first season of the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime covered the famous Duelist Kingdom arc, a large-scale Duel Monsters tournament held on Maximilian Pegasus' private island, with a roster comprised of top-rated duelists. Through Season 1 and the Duelist Kingdom arc, there are 15 cards that are currently still exclusive to the anime. In Episode 1, during Kaiba and Yugi's first ever duel, Kaiba played an equipped spell card called Negative Energy Generator. This card was used to triple the attack strength of his Sagi the Dark Clown, to a respectable 1800. But the standards of the Duel Monsters era, that would have been an insanely powerful card for players to have access to. As you can see, combining cards can be very effective. Shut the f up, Kaiba. Moving forward, episode 4 is where we see our first duel of the Duelist Kingdom tournament. Weevil vs. Yugi, where Weevil utilized the environmental effect rules of the tournament to bolster the strength of his insect deck. And just to add salt to the wound, he played an equipped spell card, Level 2 Power Boost. This card could only be equipped to an insect and that monster would gain 1200 attack and defense. Functionally, a single-use wetlands for bugs. Surprisingly, Rex Raptor had no anime exclusive cards to his deck in this span of the series, but Mako Tsunami's deck of terrifying and mysterious sea creatures held one. Kind of. In episode 7, during Yugi's duel against the Son of a Fisherman, Mako played a monster named Great White Terror, a level 5 water, aqua, normal monster with 1600 attack and 1200 defense. I say that he kind of had an exclusive card because this card quite closely resembles the card Great White, which has been a part of the physical card game since day one. But we would see this version used by Mako later in the series, so it is likely that they are two different cards within his deck. I suppose it's not the strangest thing because this is also the duel where hate crimes were committed against the moon of all things. Now Stone Soldier, destroy the moon! Are you afraid of zombies? Ghosts, perhaps? Well, you shouldn't be, because Bones is about as scary as <laughs> In episode 18, in the midst of Joey's duel against Bones, one of Joey's face-down monsters was briefly revealed after being attacked by Bones' zombie dragon. The monster's name wasn't mentioned in the anime, but the Yu-Gi-Oh! wiki refers to it as Glassman, which I assume comes from the manga, although I haven't found anything that actually confirms that. And that's all the info we have for some reason. I never quite understood cards that are shown in this manner and never once make a reappearance. It literally could have been anything else. One extremely underrated style of gameplay is the tag duels. Sometimes the most unexpected decks mesh in such perfect harmony to deliver the ops a worse beating than when my dad gets home from work. One of the very few tag duels that we've seen throughout the entirety of the franchise's series was actually one of the earliest duels. Joey and Yugi versus the Paradox Brothers in episode 21. Yeah, remember that one? Once again, an example of how everyone in the Duelist Kingdom tournament except the main team knew about the special rules. But that's neither here nor there. In this duel, Yugi plays an actually pretty wild card called Monster Replace. I know what you're about to say, but shush. I know this card shares the artwork for the trap card Shift, but it's different in ability and exponentially better. Monster Replace was a quick play spell card that allowed you to switch a monster you control with a monster in your hand that has the highest attack. Aside from just a really solid effect, you can only imagine how effective this would be in the confides of a tag duel. You share the same field as your teammate, so monsters they control are also monsters you control. If your teammate has some Weenie Hut Jr. Vanilla Monsters, so literally Joey's entire deck, you can swap that out with one of your higher attack monsters. And even outside of the anime, I'd be curious to see how a card like this would have performed in the early meta of the physical card game. We all saw this one coming, Living Freakin' Arrow, Episode 25. This card really needs no introduction if you watch the original anime, but for the unenlightened, Living Arrow is an infamous spell card that was played by Yugi in his just as infamous duel against Kaiba on the top of Pegasus's castle, shortly before the finals of the Duelist Kingdom tournament. This duel really had everything. Living Arrow basically turned Blue-Eyes Ultimate Dragon into a Burns victim, Kaiba threatening exit game, 
What more do you need? So the actual effect makes about as much sense as the duel itself. A spell effect affecting your army is inflicted onto an enemy monster. What in the PSCT is even that? Far less interesting, but we have to talk about it for the theme of the video. In the same episode, Mai played an equipped spell card by the name of Rose Whip, which increases the attack of Harpy Lady by 300 points. I mean, there's really not much more you can say about that. It's an LOB format equip card if I've ever seen one. As a matter of fact, I have. From here on out, we're in full swing of the finals of the Duelist Kingdom Tournament, and the stakes have never been higher. How did those stakes get up there? It should come as no surprise, but most of these cards come from Pegasus himself, being that he's the duelist we've seen the least of in terms of duel exhibition. Starting with episode 26, in Kaiba's duel against Pegasus, Pegasus plays the spell card Negative Energy. Anyone feeling deja vu? Funny enough, Negative Energy has a loosely similar effect to the Negative Energy Generator card that we saw in the beginning. The Negative Energy card doubles the attack of all face-up dark monsters. Yeah, that's pretty good. Another card I'd be interested to see how well it would have performed in the early meta, where dark monsters have historically been among the most powerful in the game. And in the same episode, Pegasus plays a trap card called Prophecy, which allowed him to choose one random card in Kaiba's hand, and he would guess if its attack, if it were a monster, was over, under, or equal to 2,000. And if guessed correctly, Pegasus could steal the card. Of course, Pegasus was cheating more than my ex-wife. With the power of his Millennium Eye, he was able to see exactly what random card he would be guessing. But wait, wait, something else is coming. Yes, yes, I see blue, I see white. Could it be? Yes, of course. I see the blue eyes white dragon. <laughs> Let's move away from the creator of Duel Monsters for a moment and look at Captain America, also known as Bandit Keith. America! In episode 32, in the midst of his duel against Joey, Bandit Keith played a spell card called Pillager, which allows you to look at your opponent's hand and take one card, so a one-sided exchange. I desperately want to say that if this card would be released today, that it would be really good. And while yes, there's an argument to be had on taking a crucial starter from your opponent's hand, or a useful staple, be it a pot card or a hand trap, in most instances you're playing a card to technically go plus one over your opponent, but you now have a completely useless card in your hand. I'm back. It's Pegasus. We're back to Pegasus. Tears of a Mermaid was a trap card played by Pegasus in episode episode 35 during the final match against Yugi. The trap card would activate when an opponent's face down card is turned face up, and would neutralize all enemy attacks. No, I'm not spicing up the script, that's how it was worded. So it's basically threatening Roar with more requirements? In the following episode, Pegasus, because who else would it be, plays the card Trap Displacement. For all intents and purposes, it's Mystical Ref Panel, but for trap cards. Well, Mystical Ref Panel isn't good, and this card would somehow be worse. Wrapping up the Duelist Kingdom arc, we've got another BANGER from Pegasus, with an effect on par with Confusion for everything we've seen from the Duelist Kingdom arc. Magical Neutralizing Force Field from episode 37, reaching the climax of his duel with Yugi. A spell card with the following effect. All magic loses effect on the field where this card is placed. On paper, this sounds very interesting. A card that you play to your opponent's field that they have to waste resources on to reclaim that zone. But then you look away from that paper and remember that Kaijus and Sphere Mode exist. Hell, even Lava Golem and Volcanic Queen fit the bill in a far superior way. Although we're done with the Duelist Kingdom arc, Season 1 briefly continued with some filler duels, a dice game or something, and even more anime-exclusive cards. Our final card in today's showcase comes from Episode 42, Judgment Blaster, a spell card played by the second most annoying character, Rebecca Hawkins. <laughs> in her duel against Yugi with the following effect. Discard five cards from your hand to destroy all monsters on the field. Cards got more negs than the Crimson Chins arch enemy, but I can already hear the Infernity players smashing open their piggy banks. Put your hammers away. And granted, the circumstances in which this card was used by Rebecca were all a part of her strategy to boost the power of Shadow Ghoul by sending an unreasonable amount of monsters to the graveyard. It doesn't make the card any better. So, Season 1 is in the bag. Of these 15 cards, the majority of them would have been great in the early formats of the game, and a crime against the EPA any time after that. 
We can't be too critical because that's exactly where they came from. But that's going to wrap up the first episode of The Secrets of Yu-Gi-Oh! Let me know your thoughts, guys. Drop a comment down below. And if you like the video, don't forget to drop a big thumbs up. It's greatly appreciated and will let me know that you guys want to see this series continued in the future. And until next time, this has been Purple Pineapple TV, signing off.